This is the key for the first exam for general chemistry 2. The first question is what is an intermolecular force? This is a force of attraction between molecules. Uh, the second question is defining uh, or to define vapor pressure. Um, <clears throat> vapor pressure is the pressure on the surface of a liquid by molecules which have escaped from that liquid. All right. And I put the uh, word partial there in parentheses because it's the, uh, the partial pressure if you have, like, uh, if it's at, under atmospheric pressure, it's only that part of the pressure, the partial pressure that is due to the molecules that have escaped from the liquid, not from the pressure from the air. All right, question three says, a substance condenses to a liquid as it cools because the molecules lose energy and are unable to overcome the attractive forces that hold them together. Okay, so substance condenses to a liquid as it cools. Um, molecules lose energy, and that is all true. Um, as it cools, it's losing energy, and then it's no longer able to overcome those forces that hold the molecules together so that it condenses. So this would be true. All right. Question four. Substance X has less attractive force between molecules than substance Y. Rank the substances with regard to each of the following. Assume equivalent conditions. In other words, the only thing that's different um, is the, uh, the attractive force and what's the change in the melting point, or which one is going to have the greater or the lesser um, of each of these. Okay, so I put one here just as an example to illustrate um, how you are to do this problem. Um, the attractive force, of course, I'm telling you in the problem, x is less than y. So if you have less force of attraction between the molecules, the melting point is um, going to be uh, achieved also, uh, or rather, it's going to be achieved more uh, readily, and so it'll be lower. There's less attraction, so there's less holding the, the molecules together, and as it gets more energy, it will um, overcome them easier. And so this, uh, the one with lower attractions, X, will also have the lower um, melting point. Okay. Likewise with viscosity, uh, the viscosity, it, it makes it thicker when you have a, a lot of attraction between the molecules. So the higher the attractive force between the molecules, the higher the viscosity, the lower, the lower the viscosity. Vapor pressure, that is again the pressure exerted on, uh, on the liquid by the molecules that are escaping it. So um, the, if there is a greater force holding those molecules together, then um, they will be less likely to escape into the vapor phase, and we would find that the vapor pressure is reduced, right? So the higher, the one with higher forces will have uh, the lower uh, vapor pressure. Okay, so we're going to put Y on that side, and then the one with lower attractive force will have the higher vapor pressure because more molecules are able to escape. Enthalpy of fusion. That is the in other words another way of saying this. That's the heat of melting. Okay, fusion is the process of going from uh, solid to liquid. Okay, so the enthalpy of fusion. Uh, that's the amount of heat required to melt it. In other words, all right. So if there's more attractive force, it's going to take more energy to uh, 
to melt it and break it apart okay and free the molecules from the tight bond to each other and less attractive force it'll be easier less energy will be required to melt it okay and the surface tension lastly um, the greater the attractive force between the molecules the higher the surface tension will be um, and uh, because if you have low uh, attractive force then um, there's not that uh, that force between the molecules at the surface that's binding them uh, together and uh, so that will be in that direction okay question number five says hydrogen bonding is a special example of what kind of intermolecular force all right so what are the different intermolecular forces well you have London dispersion you have um, dipole induced dipole you have dipole dipole um, ion dipole all, all of those hydrogen bonding occurs in uh, samples that have hydrogen um, covalently bonded to a very electronegative atom like oxygen okay um, and uh, and then a, another um, available lone pair but the the key thing is that it is uh, a dipole it requires a dipole because that hydrogen must be bonded to a very electronegative uh, atom and that creates a dipole okay so um, and then that's between the molecules and so you end up this is a dipole dipole um, force okay because you have to have two dipoles in order to get the hydrogen bonding to occur all right question six classify each of the following solids as ionic molecular network or amorphous okay so this is really just uh, recall and we'll remember that glass has that kind of a random structure and that's why it breaks in a random fashion okay that's the amorphous solid all right uh, barium sulfate is we know that from last semester that is an ionic compound so um, because you have the barium ions and you have the sulfate ions all right graphite we learned that was uh, you know, it's a, a large uh, plane of carbon atoms all bonded together. That is a big uh, network, right? So that's a network solid. Dry ice, okay. Um, dry ice, of course, is a common name for solid carbon dioxide. And carbon dioxide is a molecule, so this would be a molecular solid it's formed from the molecules potassium iodide okay here we have uh, again an ionic compound potassium ions and iodide ions so this is going to be ionic and lastly iodine um, this is the element iodine all right um, but it forms a, a diatomic molecule i2 and when it's a solid that would be a molecular solid All right. question number seven comparing two ionic solids state whether the lattice enthalpy will be higher or lower for the one with the greater ion charges okay so if you have greater ion charges say comparing um, NaCl with MgS okay the one with greater ion charges um, what is that effect on the lattice enthalpy well the lattice it's going to have a stronger bond uniting those and so the lattice enthalpy is going to be higher okay and um, for the for one that has uh, greater ion sizes right that's where 
uh, you have two um, ions, uh, say rubidium and iodide, okay? Uh, the rubidium ion and iodide ion are both very large, and so they can't get as close to each other as, say, uh, uh, sodium and fluoride, okay? Those are smaller ions. They can get closer to each other. And since the larger, the one with greater ion sizes can't get as close together, the lattice enthalpy will be lower. Okay?